this problem called creating strings too. So we are given a string and our task is to calculate the number of different strings that can be created using its characters. And the emphasis here is on different, so the strings needs to be distinct. And we need to print the answer modulo a billion and seven. And the length of our string can be up to 10 to the sixth. And this is a second version of a problem we already solved. So if we, so if you recall, creating strings was very similar. So if you recall, creating strings was identical. Uh, we were asked to find the same thing, but n here was only up to eight. So what we did there was just go through all possible permutations of this string and just insert them into a set or something and see the ones that are distinct. However, in this version of the problem, n is very large. It is up to a million and a million factorial is a quantity that is inconceivable. So that's why here we don't have to generate the actual strings since it would be impossible to go through all of them. But even without going through all of them, we will be able to know how many they are. And this kinda gives hope for n equals np. Okay, now let's head to the drawing board and see how we can solve this problem. So we will be given a string, say a, a, b, a, c, like in this example. And we need to find how many different strings we can generate by permuting its characters. So what is the search space in this problem? So basically we need to find the, the different permutations of this string out of all possible permutations. So our search space here is all the permutations of the strings. And how many such permutations there are? Well, this string has five characters. So the first character of the permutation I am going to form can be any of those five characters. So I have five choices for this. And when I move to the next character, I already picked the one to put here. So I only have four choices left. And then I will only have three choices left and then two and one. So this would be equal to five factorial. And in general, this is of order n factorial if n is the length of the string. Okay, so let's start by generating some permutations of this string. First, in order to generate them in order, let's reorder the characters of this string. So this becomes a, 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 b, c. So my first permutation here will be obtained by swapping b and c, so I get a, a, c, b. Then I have to move on to this A, so I'll get A, A, B, A, C. Then I will get A, A, B, C, A. Then I will get A, A, C, A, B. Then A, A, C, B, A. Then A, A, then A, 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 B, C. So as you can see here, this permutation is identical to this one. But it is not totally identical if the, we distinguish these A's. So let me highlight these A's to see that. So I'll highlight this A with yellow. And this A with pink. So we, when we will get to this permutation, we say that this whole suffix is in uh, decreasing order. So we need to swap this element with the smallest element that is larger than this element in this suffix. So that would be A. So basically this A would be this one and this A will become this one. But since we consider that both A's are identical, it does not show here. And this will actually give us a lot of insights for what's gonna happen with the other permutations here. So it looks like I'm gonna have six copies of these actual strings because I assume that this A will permute with all other A's. And since I have three elements here, 
the total number of their permutations will be 3 factorial which is equal to 6 so basically for each string I will have 6 copy of it and this actually matches with the answer which is 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial this would actually give us 120 divided by 6 which is equal to 20 but to clarify this idea more for any given string here I can for example here I have a a c b I can permute any of these characters and I will still get an identical string so since this list here contains all the permutations of this string I can group them according to their representation if I consider all the a's to be identical and that means that any permutation of these a's will be seen as identical and then I can ask myself how many ways are there to permute these a's and that would actually be equal to 3 factorial and since I only have one copy of C and one copy of B so there is only one way to permute the occurrences of C and one way to commute the occurrences of B so this would actually be equal to 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 1 factorial times 1 factorial so in general we can deduce two things first if all characters are distinct then the answer is just equal to n factorial because since the occurrence of each character is just one then there is no way to permute the occurrences of any character and that means that all the strings that will be generated will be unique otherwise if there is some character that repeats I can deduce that for any given string say for example a a b a c so given this string I know that five other copies of this exact string can be generated in all permutations of the string because I can distinguish these a's by giving them indices for example this is one two three then I, I know that in some permutation this exact string occurs with the uh, indices of the a's switched for example I know that there is an a2 a1 b a3 c string and I also know that the four other versions also exist so that's why I need to divide this n factorial by the factorial of the occurrences of each string so I'll divide this by the occurrences of letter factorial for each letter in alphabet and this actual formula also has another name which is the multinomial coefficients and it is stated like this so if we have x1 x2 up to xk non-negative integers such that x1 plus x2 all the way to xk is equal to n then the number of ways of choosing x1 element x2 elements up to xk elements from n is equal to n factorial over x1 factorial times x2 factorial all the way to xk factorial so back to our problem all what we have to do is go through our string calculate the occurrences of each character and at the end just use the multinomial coefficients formula so this is our program we will extend on the template we started with the binomial coefficients we said we are gonna use this template for most combinatorial problems and we are gonna keep extending it as we go so what I did previously was just to calculate a few things so I have this struct that I construct with this constructor and here represents the maximum factorial I will need 
and here is the modulo I want to use. Then uh, I wrote some uh, getter functions. So with this struct, I can get the factorial of some value x. I can get the inverse factorial of some value x. And this is just the factorial of x raised to mod minus 2. So that's here. So the inverse factorial is the modular binary exponentiation of factorial raised to modulo minus 2. And we said that we raised this to modulo minus 2 because it is our way of bringing something from the denominator to the numerator. Basically, the modular inverse of some number, if it is co-prime with the mod, is equal to that number raised to mod minus 2. So that's exactly what we did here. And this allowed us to have these getter functions. We also defined the binomial coefficient which is just a factorial divided by b factorial times a minus b factorial. So that's what we have here. We have factorial times inverse factorial of a minus b times inverse factorial of b. And now we're going to write another getter function, and it is for the multinomial coefficients we just saw here. And we're going to pass it a vector of ints that represents the buckets. So as we said here, if we have x1, x2 up to xk equal to n, then their multinomial coefficients would be just n factorial divided by their factorials. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're going to calculate the sum first. I'm going to look through all the buckets and sum up their values. Then I'm going to initialize the result with the numerator, which is equal to the factorial of the sum. Then I'm going to look through all the buckets again and divide the result by bucket factorial. And instead of division, I'm just going to multiply by the inverse factorial of bucket. And at the end, I'll just return my result. So that's the addition to our structure. Now let's write the actual solution to our problem. So we will start by reading our string. Then I'm going to uh, construct a factorial by giving it the maximum value of the factorial I will need, which is a million, and the mod I want to use, which is a billion and seven. Then I'm going to calculate the occurrence of each character. So I can only have 26 characters, and I'm going to initialize this with zero. And I'm going to look through all the characters of, the, of my string, and I'm going to map each character to a value between zero and 25. So A will get 0, and that's exactly what I'm going to get if I perform the subtraction of my character. If it is equal to A minus A, it would give me 0. If it is B, it would give me B minus A, which would be equivalent to 98 minus 97 in ASCII, and that would give me 1. So that's how I will get the occurrence of each character. And at the end, I will just print the multinomial coefficients of my vector. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.